Hello and welcome once more to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the gaming and tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we are going to kick things off with some comments from Gabe Newell. Now Gabe apparently just loves teasing us and giving us the slightest crumb of a hint of a tease that Half-Life 3 is apparently going to be a thing that actually exists in physical space someday. During the launch party for the brand new Valve Index VR, Gabe Newell was discussing a few things in front of the people lucky enough to attend, and it is the slightest, slightest hint and tease. Basically just him throwing a breadcrumb out is how I would describe it. And his actual comments were, quote, Milestones aren't really the end of anything. They're really the beginning. So Half-Life led to Half-Life 2, Source led to Source 2. The experiments we did with Team Fortress 2 will enable us to build Dota. Artifact is the reason we're able to do Underlords. So maybe, someday, the number 2 will lead us to that shiny integer glowing on a mountain someplace. We'll just have to see. So yeah, as I said, the vaguest sort of, yeah, maybe eventually we'll do a game with the number 3 on the end, and it might even be Half-Life 3. So, despite all of his jokes and memes about how when you ask about Half-Life 3, they delay it even more, he himself is more than content to continue giving people hope. Let's move on, however, to some comments from Phil Spencer on the future of Xbox. Now, obviously, both Sony and Microsoft are going to be potentially controlling the narrative of gaming in terms of consoles for the next few years, you know, potentially five plus years. Obviously, the Xbox 360 was much longer than that, but we have seen, obviously, a shorter console generation this time around. But regardless of all the semantics of that, it's going to be a significant portion of time that's going to be dedicated to both the Scarlet and the PS5. So while it's great that we are seeing so much um, work being put in by Microsoft in the backwards compatibility, you know, we're going to be seeing four generations of Xbox games being playable on Project Scarlet. They're obviously building a platform for the future here. And apparently Phil Spencer sees Scarlet as a tool set for developers to build with rather than just pushing the absolute limit of photorealism, which is... I think better, you know, photorealism definitely has its place, but it's still one of the least interesting sections of gaming, in my personal opinion. I'd rather see that power used in more interesting ways, or just for a different style of graphics. You know, photorealistic graphics don't really age all that well. But that's a whole different topic for another day. What he actually said was, quote, I'm not dictating anything to a developer. We give them the canvas, they paint. We're not detecting to people that they you have to go ship 8K versions of their games. I don't think we should look at this next wave and say, oh, all of a sudden everything's gone from 4K to 8K. Is there some need for us right now as an industry to go from 1080p to 4K to 8K in really like five years? No. The amount of pixels that you're pushing in those 8K scenarios, Scarlet is capable of it. The output is capable of it. We've got the specs in place to make sure that if you want, you go to, give, to deliver that experience, you can. On Scarlet, you're going to see a lot of 4K games, frame rates up to 120Hz, but also the variable refresh rate that we've been doing already on our consoles and bringing that to Project Scarlet. The game loop can literally run at the same speed as your refresh rate, which really gives you low latency input and control, which is why we're focusing on feel as much as how games look. Which, to be honest, I'm really pleased to hear him say, because it seems a bit absurd to me to be talking about 8K when we haven't really seen 4K utilised properly on consoles. You know, Xbox One X was a, a wonderful system, truly. It is a really nice system. If I don't have a PC, that probably would be my gaming system of choice. And it was, you know, great to finally move up past Sanity P in terms of consoles. But as I said many times, I would rather have that frame rate. You know, a frame rate up to 120 hertz definitely has me interested. But also, I'll leave them for a solid 60 on all games. You know, we have seen several games unfortunately being held back by the frame rate limitations of the current generation hardware. And then by that, I do mean the vanilla PS4 and, of course, the vanilla Xbox One. So if we can see that finally change for the next generation then finally is all I'm going to say on that matter. Now, I don't think many developers are going to go for 8K, to be honest with you, because as Phil rightly points out, the amount of pixels you would be pushing at that point is absurd. Now, we will undoubtedly see a few, I'm sure, 
But I think what most developers, or at least I hope, this is purely speculation on my part, of course, um, what I would hope to see is more 4K games, but 4K 60, or even 1440p 60 for more demanding games, you know, just or even just giving people the freedom to choose between different options like we saw with several games like Rise of the Tomb Raider and all that sort of thing. That is something I would love to see more of. Of course, that is quite a bit of work for developers. I understand why not every developer is going to have the time or resources to make that happen. But it is something that I really liked the inclusion of and would be very pleased to see more of in the future. Now, I will say these comments were made as part of a much larger interview by Phil Spencer with Wired.co.uk. You will find a link to that interview in the description below this video. So let's move on to our final gaming topic for today before we move on to our tech topics as we have some disappointing news for anyone playing Black Ops 4. So, if you've been playing the game the last few days, you probably noticed something different, something missing. Split screen was removed from the game, and what's kind of weird is that Treyarch didn't say anything to anybody. Obviously, players noticed, and there was a few posts on social media, of course, and the Black Ops 4 subreddit to basically say, what gives? You know, why has it been removed, and why did you remove it without saying anything, which I think is more the query. Now, thankfully, we do have a response from Treyarch. They said that the feature has been, quote-unquote, temporarily removed as they, quote, evaluate some known issues. We'll share updates in the future after investigating further, currently disabled and under investigation slash evaluation. Now, for those of you wondering, okay, that's, that's great. At least it isn't permanent. Do we know when it's going to return? No. We don't even have a slight release window for when that might happen but if there's some investigating issues that actually makes perfect sense they don't want to promise hey it's going to be back up in two weeks and they don't even know what that issue is in two weeks time now i will say it's very very strange how people basically had to go on the subreddit to ask about this for them to be told what was going on i mean if there's some issue with this feature and it has to be removed i mean it, it sucks but it happens you know such is life sometimes but just let players know. I don't see the harm in being like, hey, really sorry guys, but you know, until further notice, split, split screen has been removed. Did they think people would notice? I genuinely am a bit puzzled by their decision to not say anything until they were asked, but who knows what goes through the minds of AAA developers sometimes. So let's move on to our tech topics for today, the first of which is some bad news for Toshiba and Western Digital as they had a power outage on their joint manufacturing facilities in Yokaichi, Japan. A 13 minute power outage to be exact. And the damage has been significant. Western Digital announced a loss of almost 6 exabytes of NAND production. And Toshiba, the news is even worse, as they have lost anywhere between 6 and 9 exabytes. Uh, exabytes, sorry, excuse me. So the damage actually includes, you know, wafers that were being processed, the facilities and production equipment. And this is most likely going to have a significant impact on the global market because 35% of the world's NAND supply is produced at the Yokoichi, Yokoichi, excuse me, Operation Campus. And we are expecting the damage to last for some time as return to standard manufacturing rates is expected to occur by roughly mid-July. And just to kind of put this into some sort of context, because that, that doesn't sound that bad, you're like, oh, it's only a couple of weeks, it's not that awful, I suppose, it could be worse. This power outage actually happened on June the 15th, that's almost a month. If Even, even if it, that, it actually happens by mid-July, that's a month of reduced manufacturing rates. And again, this is most likely going to have an effect on the market, which has already been quite unsettled as of late. So... Bad news for them, unfortunately, but we're going to move to our final topic for today, which is regarding Zen 3. So what we have here is a few comments from AMD's Forrest Narod when talking to Anantec in a recent interview. And he was talking about Zen 3 Milan processors. And during the interview, which you will find linked in the description below this video, Forrest actually confirmed that Zen 3 Milan processors, which of course is going to be the follow-up to Rome, is going to support the SP3 server socket, which is what they currently use for Epic and Epic 2. So we are going to be seeing a continuation of DDR4 memory support, which basically means, the long and short of it is, we will not see DDR5 being used for Zen 3. 
and Forrest basically said that, quote, DDR5 is a different design, so it would actually require a new CPU socket from AMD. So when are we going to be seeing DDR4 being phased out? It's really tough to say. Of course, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what they're going to be doing with their fourth generation, for instance, but I think it's fairly likely that we'll be seeing DDR4 still used with Zen fourth generation and then we will finally see DDR5 being utilized on the generation after that because again that would mean a new socket design and AMD have been very steadfast in their promise to support AM4 for as long as possible. So we're probably going to be seeing the move away from AM4 around then, that's my speculation and it would make perfect sense but we'll have to see of course what actually ends up happening in the actual, well, real life, I suppose to say. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time.